How you doing everybody? What we're looking on here is an Ampeg V4, which is uh, a tube amp from 1971. And this thing was made um, by Ampeg, obviously, when it was owned by Magnavox, which were based out of Linden, New Jersey at that time. So this thing um, has a lot of tubes, um, has a lot of, a lot of components that need to be changed. Uh, after all, it is uh, 45 years old. <clears throat> and what I want to do is I kind of want to walk through what I've done on it. And, um, and if anybody has any questions, I'll be happy to answer. So first things first, lethal voltage. These things have a lot of voltage in them. If you get one of these things and you buy it and you intend on refurbishing it or even opening it up, do not plug it in when you first get it. Matter of fact, this one I put on the bench and did not plug it in for a few weeks until I got everything to a sound state. And that includes replacing all of the electrolytic caps and checking everything inside to make sure that it's safe. And I want to show you something about this one. If you look over here, this big mess that you see here, um, obviously they didn't have circuit cards for these things mostly. They had terminal strips. And I'll see if I can get in there. And when I got this one, the terminal strip that's right down here was broken in half. And this .047 cap was broken in half as well. And if I had plugged it in, I would have shorted out the transformer. And then this thing would have been basically a pile of garbage. So that's why you never plug these things in when you first get them. You open them up, you do a visual inspection. Now these clips that you see here, I put these in myself, and I'll tell you why. This main panel here, right, this whole panel, um, you need to take it off to get to some of these connections here. And all of this stuff is hardwired and soldered. And in order to take this off, you'd have to unsolder all the wires here. And as you can see, there's not a lot of room. Um, and that's probably how that terminal strip was broken in the first place. So what I did was I put quick disconnects on all of the wiring that attaches to these three switches. That's your power, your polarity, and your standby. This way, if I ever have to take this off again, I can just quick, simply disconnect these and the whole thing will come off. So that's a feature that I added. I also put this little um, legend here so that whoever works on this next time will know exactly which connector does what. And you see I've got these connectors labeled with letters. Uh, this one is A, and on here it says uh, red power lamp. So that's the connector for the lamp right here in the front. So um, so little feature that I added. Um, here's the firecracker that I, I had to put in, um, and that's been mounted. And this is a, a mod that was required by, from a field service notice um, to prevent damage to the to the amp when you pull the speaker out while it's, while it's plugged in. Um, and it prevents flyback voltage from coming in and damaging the unit. So this was also a mess when I got it. There were, there were things soldered all over here. I removed it all. I put a nice little terminal strip here. I neatened it up. Um, I've got everything secured really nice. These are your electrolytics. Um, this is your 704040. Um, and this is your 4040 over here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip it over and show you what it looks like from the other side. All right, we've got it flipped over. So first word of caution, this thing is 68 pounds, it's heavy. So let's just run through some of the things I've done here. So here's a replacement electrolytic. And I was able to get this off of a website called fliptops.net. They're a company that specializes in Ampeg. They have all the parts that you may need. And then here's the other two electrolytics that I was talking about. Remember, 600 volts plus through these things. If you unplug them, there's still 600 volts in there. If you unplug the amp. So you got to either drain the caps or wait. Always test it before you mess around with it. These are your 7027A tubes. Um, kind of hard to get. Um, there's a company that makes these that uh, was called Tesla JJ. Um, was able to get these off of eBay. Then you've got a, a couple of other tubes here in the preamp section. Um, some of these are hard to get. 6Ks, 11s. Um, then you've got a 6CG7, six, six and you've got a lot of 12A X7s in here, and a, and a 12DW7. Again, I was able to get all these things off of eBay, so I do have another set of tubes. The tubes that I took out were the original Magnavoxes, um, and it's always good to match these things in pairs. So if you're going to buy them, just, just don't replace one. And if you look at the board here, what you'll see is I replaced every capacitor, whether it be electrolytics or just a standard non-polarized capacitor. Um, Obviously, the ones I took out were much bigger. Um, I have a few more that I need to finish on. This one and this one, I haven't gotten a new one yet. Um, and you'll see that there's some 2-watt resistors on here that are raised up above the board so that heat uh, can dissipate through and it doesn't, doesn't scorch the board. And then over here on the preamp, um, same story. Replaced all the capacitors. 
I have a couple of other resistors that I'm going to change out. Um, but when I first got the amp and plugged it in for the first time, I was getting crackling, popping, um, bad capacitors. That's what that is. I also found a couple of um, non-polarized capacitors that were bad, mostly these 0.47s right here. These two were bad. Once I replaced all those, everything came back to life. The first time I powered it up, I powered it up with a Variac and with a dim bulb tester. <clears throat> if you don't know what a dim bulb tester is, go take a look on YouTube for one. Basically, it will help you to bring things up and know if the thing is going to short out and if you're going to blow your transformers. There's two very large transformers in these things. That's what makes them so heavy. So um, you're going to have to be really careful. Um, and that's the amp walkthrough. Um, like I said, I still have a little bit of work to do on this thing, but it's working perfectly. It's very, very quiet, and it's a beautiful amp. So anyway, if you have any questions, let me know. I'll be happy to help. And just one more thing. I will post a follow-up when this amp is completed and buttoned up, um, and I'll let you know. One other qu uh, thing I want to mention about schematics. There's a lot of schematics for this amp. Um, they made V4s, V22s. Um, there's different revisions. This is a Rev-E. And the way you find that out is by when you remove the top cover, which is right here, you'll see that they actually attach a copy of the schematic to the top cover. And if you look there, it's Rev E. So that's how I know what Rev I have. Um, and there's some subtle differences on the Rev A. There was a resistor here, which is no longer there. There's a couple of components here that they list, like a, a 120 picofarad cap which if you look down here, they tell you that some components may not appear in, in some units. So you gotta pay attention. But you've got your schematic, and remember, follow one connection at a time, okay? Any questions, let me know. Give me a like, thanks.